I'm Bambi Francisco, and I'm continuing my discussion with Jeff Clavier. He's one of the top angel investors in Silicon Valley. We're going to talk about the overall VC industry and angel industry. Uh, the VC industry raised about $13 billion in 2009, down significantly, 55% from yep. 2008, and probably should have gone down anyway. But how it's does this affect you? It's still a lot of money. But how does this affect your uh, your investments? Because you're investing in early stage companies. Yes. And um, in, and how does this affect your investment activity? So, at the end of the day, uh, VCs have raised 13 billion, which is quite a hefty amount. Um, the VC industry is putting, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 billion dollars to work mm -hmm. per uh, per year. So they've replenished quite a bit of that, and there's a lot of money sitting in the coffins of the VCs. So, at the end of the day, what we see for ourselves, the early stage guys, is there going to be a set of firms to mark up our deals. So we do the initial, you know, half a million, two million, five in companies, and then we need to find someone who's going to do the three to five million dollar round. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that over the past quarter or two quarters, for a lot of my companies, there was not one, not two, but five companies trying to really get in and doing, putting term sheets down, competing on price. So I think that the early stage part of the venture industry is actually doing pretty well. Well, there's there's this whole idea, I and mean, many VCs would tell you that uh, they see a lot of oh, sort of shrinkage, I guess. Yes. There's going to be fewer VCs. So how does that affect how does that affect you in the, the early stages? If you're not going to have that many VCs, um, you know, putting money in at later rounds. Well, it's all relative. I think that we have a massive industry in terms of the number of firms, number of GPs, and there's just too much money around to invest in, in a limited number of opportunities mm -hmm. and we'll talk about the exits and you know it's all about how can we drive value for the entire industry through the exits and so we need we need that sort of shrinkage because it's going to increase the quality of the firms and the deals which will be funded because the worst for us is to have bad deals being funded because yeah. it just dilutes the value of, of the entire platform. And you're just spending all money just trying to compete with one another. Yeah and so Overall, I think that for us, because we are extremely early in, in, in the investment process and, and in the maturity of the companies, we have two sets of opportunities. One is to get the companies you know, funded early, prove themselves, and then go, go through the traditional VC path, Series A, Series B, Series C, raising quite a bit of money and building large companies. And something that we've seen you know, quite a bit of in 2006, 2007, is companies being picked up after they have done their seed round for 10, 20, 30, 50 million dollars, where there wasn't, you know, this sort of long series of investments, just mm -hmm. one, and we actually made quite a bit of money on those. And we still have this opportunity, and we start seeing these types of e exits coming back. You do. Okay, let's talk about... Which we didn't see that many of, you know, in 2009. What's your outlook for exits this year? I know you're looking for your... I mean, you, you have to be optimistic, but realistically, what, what is your, you optimistic. have to be optimistic, yes. yeah. Well, a so couple of things. Um, first, it, it's as though the fourth quarter and a portion of the third quarter of 09 were sort of unlocked from a, an m and perspective. You know, we had Zappos at 1.2 billion. We had uh, AdMob at... Um, uh, 750 million. We had um, Intuit acquiring Mint, one of my companies, for 170. So we had like, in in just a few months, mm -hmm. close to or more than two billion dollars just in pure tech M&A. That was sort of pretty positive in an environment where there had been no exits whatsoever for six right. months. And you know we've seen um, Google, we've seen Twitter, we've, we're going to see Facebook, we're going to see um, mm -hmm. you know LinkedIn. So a lot of the super tankers mm -hmm. of the, um, the Web2 industry being very active in bringing in, you know, interesting teams and startups at, you know, good prices, the 10 to 15 to 30 million dollar range. If you're, if you're a firm that has done a six million dollar investment, it's bad. If you're an angel who's put, you know, a million dollar in, it's good. It used to be that Google, eBay, Amazon, Yahoo, I guess when I used to cover this industry, it used to be that they were the, the buyers. Who who are the buyers today? Um, some of the same names: sure. Google, Amazon, Microsoft. New names: Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. And you know, don't don't let you know old media stay in that corner. Old media is going to sort of come back 
to look at some of those complementary properties and buy some of those. Mm -hmm. AOL being old media now, maybe. You know, we'll see. I, you know, Tim, Tim is a smart guy, so we'll see. What kind of exits then? Uh, what kind? What kind of consolidation do you see? What kind of? Where are we going to see some of those acquisitions? Um, so are we going to see more ad mobs? Are we going to see social gaming type of acquisitions? Well, what's going to happen, I think, is that. Uh, you have the existing platforms looking at those emerging uh, leaders. AdMod was a great example of a company which had almost, I wouldn't say invented the space, but they were the clear leader in mobile mm -hmm. advertising. And as you know, mobile phones, mobile communication, mobile broadband you know, penetrates even further, it became key to Microsoft, oh, sorry, to um, Google and to Apple to actually make a move in the space. Mm -hmm. And so the couple of you know, companies which were the clear leaders, AdMob picked up by Google, and uh, Quattro picked up by Apple were taken out for all, close to a billion dollars worth in transaction. Mm -hmm. And so I think that as um, those established leaders look at increasing their footprint and, and defend or gain new market share, they will actually make a move on those companies which have been around for two, three years and have established themselves as, uh, as leaders. Um, social gaming is another interesting example. You know, Zynga clearly, rocket ship doing extremely well. Playfish, you know, decided to, um, to be taken out by, um, by EA, mm -hmm. Electronic Arts, for a transaction close to $400 million. Mm -hmm. For a company which is two years old, it's not bad. Not bad, not bad. So, and it sounds like you're very positive that this year that um, all of those new players, Twitter, LinkedIn, yep. and, uh, are going to be acquisitive, and that's, that's well, I just, I just that's sold the company to, um, to Twitter. Oh, to Twitter, yeah, Mixer yeah Labs. exactly. And, and, you know, what I can tell you is that... They're um, looking? <laughs> I won't comment on that, but what I can tell you is that, um, you know, part of my job is to stay close to um, the uh, M&A, you, know, you know, departments of all the large acquirers and so on and so forth, and for about six to nine months, I haven't heard them, and for the past, you know, three months, I've been meeting some of those to update them on my portfolio of companies to just prepare for what I think will be an interesting 2010. Well, that's a good sign then. Thanks, Jeff. I think that's going to make everybody watching this video a little bit happier, feeling optimistic. I've been speaking with Jeff Clavier on Bambi Francisco.